Welcome back to the Salty Show, and welcome back to our Total War Rome 2 Empire Divided Campaign as the Amazing Palmetta Empire, Episode 15. Hope you guys are doing well today, and if you are, like and subscribe, as always. And I do hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving, um, as it is right around the corner and prior upon this video's release. But without further ado, I left you guys off in last episode with a battle as media has brought the Fury of Vesra Ragna. I probably butchered that, to the doorsteps of Hatra after we defeated the Sassanid and Immortal army. I am recording this directly after episode 14, uh, because I don't want to risk the save not being here. So we're going to have to fight this. Um, or at least I am. You guys won't see this for a while. But without further ado, let's get into it. They will seek out gold in your bells, given the chance. Hello everybody and welcome to another battle of Hatra. Wow, our first volley. Not good. That is a huge hitbox. Welcome to the, the worst battle that we could deal with where the enemy have a huge range or a lot of range cab. We are thankfully able to box them in in a lot of places. But the defenders, the guardians of Hatra really need some time to replenish their forces. We are not sitting pretty. It's going to be up primarily to our archers to deal with the enemy range and for our poor, poor units of pikemen and vigilates to kind of soak up the damage of the javelins here. They've got really big shields though, which is proving to be an issue. And every second we're not shooting them with arrows, they're hitting us with javelins. But thankfully... The AI is going to make some very stupid decisions and sending their... Oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't get to watch this, but sending their jav cab into a pike wall is imminent immediate death. Unfortunately, our cab did get drawn out into the field, and they are going to really struggle. And I really do mean struggle. Let's see what happened here. Yeah, they're, they're going to struggle, unfortunately. So don't expect any help from them. But thankfully, our archers are doing a hell of a job. One thing I found out is I do think I need to start deploying the smaller barricades here where we want the enemy to get bogged up longest. Because they're not going to be able to destroy this the way they do or get through it the way they do the tall ones. So we're really decimating the units here. They are starting to slip through, they're breaking it here, but not after we inflicted some severe casualties on the enemy. Unfortunately, our poor javelins don't really stand a chance, but we are going to start using these tall barricades to protect us from their javelins, and as you can see, some of them will slip through as this is a modded in barricade, but a lot of the javelins are getting stuck and proving ineffective. Ah, uh, poor guy. Uh, if only it was ineffective for him. Our archers are making their way over to where we need them. And we're not very worried at all about the Persian levy that's decided to engage our vigil units. That's a pretty fair fight. And we've got some pikemen standing in uh, reserve to help out. The most important bit is going to be to soak up the damage here and deal with their range contingents. Their infantry are uh, not the problem that we're worried about. They do have some skirmishers in there that we want to watch out for, though. Our slingers are getting some nice free shots in, too. We are losing anybody in the back here, unfortunately, but a lot... I will say, I might... I would not want to be here. This is terrifying. Um... Even in real life, could you imagine seeing this? I mean, like, all right, we're just supposed to stand here. But our forces are making their way across, and our archers are in position to start just raining death upon the poor, poor skirmishers. They are running out of forces, and it's going to primarily turn into a melee slog. Except for the skirmishers, unfortunately, that are over here, which are quite a few. And sadly, our calf did get defeated out there due to the problems they faced. And 
that horse skirmisher is coming back to uh, inflict what casualties it can. Thankfully, our forces are ready. And we're dealing a nice little number to the enemy through these walls here. A little cheesy, but, you know, when you're going for no losses in the whole campaign, you gotta do a bit of cheese. You really do. So they're just, we're just gonna... Realistically, we're just gonna say that there's some there's some gaps in the wood here that we can't see, and these men can. And they're just making, you know, they're just taking advantage of it. The same way the enemy is taking advantage of the fact that they can slip through this way and uh, flank our forces here just a little bit. We do have some Palm Reed Spearmen to protect the- ooh, Jesus. Yeah, like I said, skirmishers are just the bane of existence in this campaign. If we're not the ones doing it, it is deadly. As we will see as this battle continues. Unfortunately, these horse skirmishers are proving to be rather cost-effective um, for the enemy, which is a problem to us. Thirteen brave men here in the back. About to be even braver, as uh, they're going to get rear-charged, I think. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, that sucks. They have twelve men left, eleven... 10, 9, yikes. These poor armored swordsmen. But you know what? They do break the morale of that enemy, and they are withstanding the assault of the skirmishers. These guys need some wine after the battle. They really need some wine. That unit doesn't get to stay replenished for long. We are breaking a good bit of their assault over here. Unfortunately, our flank is being withered away due to these skirmishers. And it is going to force my hand. We're going to have to start sending what few forces we have in reserve up here to cover this area. These skirmishers are really going to wither away our pikemen quickly. As you can see if we don't do something about it. A good chunk of these guys aren't doing anything. Wish I realized that in the battle, but that's fine. The guys doing the work are the ones being completely javelin. Yeah, this... It's a sad day. A sad day when you see this on our side. Yeah, we're gonna pull them out as obviously they're taking way too many casualties. They're still taking casualties. They're down to 76 men. And we're gonna have to send all that remains over here. And try our best to disrupt the skirmisher forces. As you can see, it's just really deadly to be a Roman right now. This is half the reason we have the armies we do. Is we are countering the Sassanid or the Eastern tactics of ranged gameplay. Which is why these um, auxiliary Persian archers have been a godsend to us. They are saving the day. I really do love the auxiliary system in Rome 2. It's by far one of the coolest features, and I'm so glad that it is in this DLC because we're playing as a Roman faction, but also that DEI did an amazing job incorporating it into every kingdom that you play. Very cool job. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. We are going to start using fire arrows because their general... While still alive, these units are extremely, extremely um, low tier. Their morale's not too high. Excuse me. Sorry, everybody. Drinking soda, apparently, and I'm getting a little, getting a little burpy today. I'm sure I missed one of those. But as you can see, a mass route is starting to ensue. These Persian levy are not really cut out to have this type of battle, and we've managed to really scare the skirmishers into trying to attack our units at the wall here and as you can see it is proving extremely effective and with that a mouse route ensues and victory once again falls to the guardians of Hatsura and we can continue today's episode later and I will see you on the campaign map let that be the last battle of uh, Hatra for now. We have pushed away every army that existed here, so... 
But yeah, unfortunately did lose our cavalry. We might need to recruit some mercenaries. But thankfully, fingers crossed, nothing happens. That throws all our plans off. Perfect. So, thank God that is over with. And victory is ours and Hatra remains. And I will be doing this. Cats plus sweats. Fine. All right. I'm going to take a very quick break here as I recorded this back to back. So, I actually have to go to work. So, you'll notice a very quick change of hands. Apologies about that cut, everybody. But I did need to take a little break. And uh, four days later, I am back. After the sieges of Hatra, where the guardians of Hatra put up a valiant defense and beat back the eastern hordes that were crushing on her doorstep. We've managed to push all of them back. They're now scattered into the land and pretty disorganized. Uh, not much has happened off camera. I didn't do anything while I was away other than I've leveled her up and I've deployed our spy. And most importantly, Zenobia Attack! has laid siege to Arminia. They will fall in one turn, meaning I don't think it'll be necessarily worth trying to fight this manually unless they attack us. Even if Arminia attacks, because we can see their army, even if Arminia attacks with the assistance of all of these armies, and they can't even, none of them can get there, so we're completely fine. Um, if Arminia attacks, I think Zenobia can handle that battle wholeheartedly. But just mean we have 4,500, I think it's time we actually start trying to potentially invest in our economy up here. Excuse me. Now, with that, this is a shield settlement. The only other one that exists, I think, is, yeah, down here in Galatia. And we're not taking that anytime soon. Now, the granite, I don't know how beneficial it would be. We would get some nice auxiliaries from here. That We could also get some pretty strong units as well and use this as a military building or a military settlement. I think we might will invest in it just a little bit. Armies, buildings, characters. Um, meanwhile, you're going to grant industry growth. So we could push for this. That would give a lot from mining. Are we getting a benefit from industry? We are. It's 10%. I'll tell you what, that's plenty for me. And then we'll work towards investing in the other two settlements once we've secured the entirety of the region. Meanwhile, I guess, just in case, we'll have her loot. Considering we don't deal with that land just yet, we can make a pretty penny at least for one turn. I'm very tempted to use the Legion of Yarbul to move in. <clears throat> Jupiter, well, Shaman. This is going to be the Legion of R. Oh, can't type today. I think that's how you spell it. Arminia. Arminia. Arminia, yeah. Just to signify the conquest that they took part of, because the Legion of Jupiter remains the same. It's Queen. It's the Queen Mother's Legion. And Yarbul's or Balshamon's not done anything, really, just yet. The Legion of Arminia, I think they rightfully deserve their title. Now, with that, this army would be rather annoying to deal with. We do have a strong contingency of slingers, though. I think we're going to make very cautious movements. That's what we're going to call them. We're going to make very cautious moves. Um, mercenaries, not worth it for sure. They're going to continue suffering replenishment issues. And if we can slowly grind through this settlement, the Media Magna, that is really going to start securing our northern border. And uh, we really need that. If we can finally get these legions to create a new defensive line like here that's going to be way easier to manage with way fewer legions running amok not to mention our settlements are fairly defended with all our pikes in the world 
So Armenia will fall next turn. These armies have all been beaten back. Let's go ahead and regroup. Give me that cav back. I don't think we need this one slinger unit anymore. So give me one cav. We have five pikes, five archers, four spears. I'll tell you what, give me another cav. Give us three cav. You're fine over there. I'm starting to actually think. Eh. The auxiliary Syrian archers are pretty good. Well, we do already get archers over here, though. The Persian archers. If we leveled them up, we'd get another Palmyrene Spearman. But would we even get there? Actually, more importantly, one more turn until we have that. Let's actually go down here and level you up. So what do we want? Defense or offense? I think off or defense. Yeah, makes sense to me to go defense. They get better armor and shields. I definitely don't see a negative to that. Maine appears to be marching towards the Sakistan army here. Nabatea has a full stack defending their settlement. I'm rather confident in their ability. Go ahead and level him up. You're sitting pretty. We need another two turns and we can get a proper legion over here. Another two turns as well before we can get some Libyan infantry over here. I do hope the Nasimones, I wish them luck in the endeavors to come. Well, further ado though. I think, unfortunately, we're at an end turn. Please. Make sure we're not missing anything, as you never want to... I never want to jump into these and not check. Our son is 14. Zenobia is holding the kingdom together with her might and her might alone. Let's end the turn and find out what happens, though. Fingers crossed I'm not missing anything. You're at a full stack. You're not at a full stack, and I really don't want to make you a full stack. There'd be no reason to. All right, yeah. Let's end the turn. And hope. <clears throat> Just a heads up. I'm actually I'm trying to think. When does this video... I'm trying to remember when this video is supposed to go live. Okay, so there'll be, I think, two more before the end of the year. Do make sure you check I out Monday's update. Oh, wow, they're trying. Um... Check out the end of the year update for all things channel related. And they are attacking us with what little they have. And we will have to defend this very quickly. But Zenobia, I think, has this in the bag. Welcome, everyone, to the fall of Arminia as they have pushed out of their city in a desperate attempt to try and break the siege of their capital. A sad conclusion to the kingdom that nearly controlled all of Asia Minor. Thankfully, though, we've come in and saved the province, and we're now pushing back as Zenobia leaves the defense in this army with a reinforcing um, legion on the way. Oh, we're going to be utilizing mainly the bulk of our force here. With our skirmishers up front, they're going to take the brunt of the damage as the enemy do try to go in for an early charge here. Their cataphracts taking some damage, but unfortunately still going strong. I do think our jabs are going to get a throw off before they get charged, or maybe not. No, they're not. They are going to get a horribly, horrible charge, but they're going to hit our legionaries in there. Oh my dear god, that guy got seven, eight jabs to the face. Thankfully, our skirmishers are pretty good in melee, too, especially against light horse skirmishers. Meanwhile, our cav are chasing off some of their horse skirmishers in the back or in the rear line. And our camel warriors are moving up from the rear to engage the couple of melee or um, foot skirmishers that they have lying in wait. Our warriors here are taking a bit of damage. Gonna have to deal with the couple of melee forces they have. And I'm really not super worried. Our skirmishers are going to pull back behind the legionary line, though. And the legionaries are going to do some quick work on them. 
as Hillman are no match for them. Our Camel Warriors are in the rear. They're going to start mopping up anything that we can while this unit is actually engaged with the general in melee combat. Reinforcements are almost there. And our archers are making swift work of any range that they have lying around. As they try to do damage to us, but their their army is just not equipped to deal with uh, concentrated range fire. God, that was, that was deadly. Wow. We have broken them back, though, and now we're moving to reinforce our infantry lines up front that have been holding off the melee component of this army. Swooping in and saving them. We have chased away, or we are, I think, dealing the final couple blows to their general. The garrison is coming in now with a couple of ragtag units that they have. But we are pulling away our forces, and our reinforcing legion has made its way here. We're going to get a little annoying rear charge from some lowly horse skirmishers, but that's fine. The bulk of their army has been contained and is being dealt with swiftly. As we can see. Very nice. Zenobia is the general taking some casualties dealing with the eastern cataphracts over here. Thankfully, she was not harmed, and our pikemen are going to mop up what remains of those cataphracts. We are dealing with a couple of reinforcing units that they have, and we're chasing off these units here, the skirmishers. But with that, I do believe... Yeah, there's a... They did, unfortunately, deal a significant blow to one of our camel spearmen units. There's nothing left of that unit. But we are coming in to re revenge that force. A desperate little blow. Man, that was a deadly javelin throw. Holy crap. Camels are big targets, but... We have crushed anything that sits as an Arminian force. And with the fall of their general, that should be the route we're looking for. And Arminia has finally fallen in today's episode. And with a desperate attempt to push out, they did actually take one of our poor soldiers with them, unfortunately. But that is the end to the Arminian Kingdom. We will obviously release those forces, spare them the slaughter that their uh, comrades had. And Armenia should cease to exist once the end of this turn rolls around. Oh, it did not. Interesting. The merchant kneels in the middle of the hall. His mumblings of mercy are drowned the angry murmur of the quarters around him. While about sits on the royal throne, pale and rigid. He also knows what a conspirator against his mother deserves. Execute him. Death is a traitor's only fitting end. Hire him. Imprison him. His conspiracy failed. Running in a cell will suffice. Now, I do believe he must execute. And there we go. Now we can claim the settlement. Um, let's just occupy. That's weird that it waited till now to do that. Interesting. She actually got a level up for this. That's nice. Or this. Never mind. They did. They did unfortunately lose a camel warrior, though. That sucks. But with occupation under secure, we could get a Roman ballista. That'd be pretty nice. Um, let's dismantle that. Dismantle that. Excuse me. Um... Do we want a Roman Ballista here? Are we going to recruit a Roman Ballista here? Probably not. Let's get rid of those. And who claimed that region in the party? Okay, we did. So we don't need that. We need Romanization. Perfect. Meanwhile, though... It's actually quite expensive to change this over. We 
would get quite a bit. They are getting a huge boost to commerce right now. So it does only make sense to make it potentially commerce as well. And she has a special building as well that would really help. 480 from local commerce. 150 from local commerce. I think we'll stick to the spice market. So she has secured this region. That can that'll actually leave this army to do the protecting. I mean, we really don't even need to protect the settlement once we get it boosted up. The forces have started to make their retreat though. And it appears they have fixed their food issue, or they've just stopped taking damage for some reason. Continue leveling up that morale. She could try to take that settlement. There's only four there. Do we want to push? Make haste, men. Get those stakes up. I really think we might want to. I really do. I mean, this could start to turn the tide of battle in our favor pretty quickly. I fight for the people. See. Um, join our ranks. It was four turns. Three turns. Wow, it really does. That's so interesting. That's cool. We do need to have a garrison there for a while. Journey completed. It is a great and glorious thing to fight How for interesting. our cause. Get a cheaper unit. A noble cause requires noble men. Foreign territory. She's not the best general, but fingers crossed, she might be able to maintain that. We're going to keep them deployed there. Fifteen. We could almost bring these guys over. He is fine. Lydia is not doing anything, which is unfortunate. I wish they were. Um, and Galatia is sitting there recruiting a new army, which is terrifying. Ready for battle. I think we might actually try to recruit a new army. Well, maybe not. I definitely don't think we need that there anymore. And the Sakistan army. Oh! Wow. They took the settlement. Greetings, most excellent friend. Oh, this is, we're lucky. We're so lucky here. Before your own heart fires. We seek trade and prosperity for all. I am yeah. sure that you can see that in your notes. That is this perfect. Absolutely beautiful. So we've secured client state status of the Blimmy. And the Maya now, and they have secured a coastal region, allowing us to trade with them and Nabatea. Please be seated and take wine to cool the head. Unfortunately, trading with them or making them a client state is still not in their forte. Is it any? Is it is anyone else's forte? Perhaps it doesn't look like that. Numidia. Numidia. They have kicked Rome out. Oh wow. Be welcome. Let us talk and then enjoy good Roman wine when we have agreement. Man, I wish we could make peace. They're at war with the East. And the Gothi. 
the Roman pretenders, me. Uh, okay, so they're only at war with the Gothi. How interesting. But it would serve us a strong... It would give a big problem if we made them a client state and Galatia didn't accept peace. For the Senate's part, welcome. For my part, Man. welcome also. Come and on. Give me your wisdom. No? They want nothing to do with it. Okay. I definitely think they have secured the southern coast. I see no hostile activity. The Sassanids have been defeated down here. The Himyar forces are moving about. Perfect. I did not expect Maine to take that region. That is hilarious. They put Nabatea into a single settlement. They kind of deserve it. With that being said, though, this army... And definitely head west as well now. Three turns. Ready for Set up the watch. Can you recruit anything worth it? Not really. You've got the range. I think we'll have them go up here. We're going to need both legions soon to protect the west anyways. But we definitely need this one over there ASAP. Meanwhile, I think it's time we try to actually start investing in our cities, I believe. I think we have the economy to do it, guys. I'd almost think we could probably free up. He could force March to Hatra. We are ready. She unfortunately cannot reach any of these armies though. But perhaps, perhaps she wouldn't need to. There are five archers, the garrison. They're a bunch of hillmen. They're a bunch of javs. There's no secondary army here. Speak. I'm listening. They wouldn't be able to make it across the river. What do you wish it? Let's quickly... We need to scope out the situation here. Okay, the Sassanids have a army over here. Okay, we don't want to be stupid. They, there's another army there. So, are we sitting happy with this army? I, you know what? I think I am, actually. At your sitting pretty happy with that force there. Pretty happy over here. Zenobia will be free next turn, which will grant a another legion. With that, Samasoda, I'm guessing we will go... We looked at this last time. Twenty percent wealth to agriculture. What are we? What are? What are we getting right now? Subsistence, commerce. We grant thirty percent. Twenty-five for farming. Twenty-five for farming. Local commerce. Thirty. Thirty-seven. Okay. So really, any of these. So this is farming. That would be commerce. Two hundred wealth from all commerce. That's pretty good. Twenty wealth from culture, twenty wealth upon well, that's morale. Well, this is a morale or a recruiting settlement, but I don't think it'll be that way forever. I think we'll do the Temple of Yathabal here, getting that commerce boon. You know why not? All these regions are extremely Latin, so there's no reason to invest down there. Do we have anything to level up anywhere else? Ammonium, you're fine, actually. Looks like we might be able to invest in Edessa. Um, I would rather... We could go put a... The Shrine of Balshaman in the capital. 
for now, let's take a gander here. 20% unit morale upon recruitment. Let's see. Agriculture. We're not making much, obviously. Five public order. I do believe this will remain. I mean, this will be on the front line for a while. We could get that extra research rate, though. 8% research. Why not? Spend all the money we have, and let's end the turn, I think. Unless, do we want to assault parts of there? It would open up this area, I feel like. But I'll tell you what, we have a garrison. We have a full stack, you know? What if we can draw them out? Shoot. Move just a little too much. It'll be an open field battle. Be 18 against their 20, but our troops are superior. There's no forces lying in wait. What are you providing? Mayor, populace. In the local region deployed. Let's take a gander over here just to make sure there's nothing coming from Ekbaktan. There's not. Perfect. Alright, let's end the turn, see what happens. Sorry, buddy, if you can hear me popping my knuckles. <sighs> Things are going too smooth for... Oh, that is annoying. But our forces are close. That is much minute. I'm sorry, Nasimones, but I'm not really willing to get into the war yet. Feels that an attack Galatia's a ticking time bomb, too. It is Easter now. Population... Unsure about the underworld. Sabotage subversion. That's fine. Alright, they're raiding. These guys have pulled back. What are you doing? 9.5 culture conversion. We're going to send you back. It appears the Bactrian forces are also pulling back. There's a large, there's a large traverse area here that nobody should be moving through. It's the deserts. Okay, they've appeared to have stationed Gazaka once again. Where to go in? We're gonna take this settlement. It's barely even. I'm not gonna show you all this fight, but we are going to secure this settlement. And I will take care of that off camera. Meanwhile, you know, over here, we will need to deal with that army as well, unfortunately. Along with that one. But I'm more worried about our east or our west, my bad. Maine is a bit of a powerhouse now, which is just hilarious. Himyar is ready to defend us. go there. You have I guess we got, yeah, we got the shield maker, level 2 armor, level 2 shields. Ready for um, are we keeping the infantry auxiliary down here? Make haste, men. Ready. Two turns. We'll keep them. I think we're going to get rid of the javelins, though. I say that. We're only going to get Peltus. 
and they don't offer any range. Oh, yeah, they do. Egyptian archers, tier one, duh. Oh, wait, wrong. Oh, no, not wrong region, wow. So, yeah, get rid of them. At your command. And you can actually grab some nice auxiliary Libyan infantry, which are pretty decent. And I think you're going to. Five, that's a pretty sizable army. I mean, there goes all our money, but the Nasimones have abandoned their settlement, meaning they're probably dead in the water. So we do not want to rely on them to take up the Numidians' uh, attention for much longer. Alright, very quickly... Ready for Five slingers, a pike versus seven. I think she can take it. But, alright, that's what I'm gonna do. Yep. I'm going to slaughter this army, retake the settlement, and I will catch you all on the flip side. And with that, the Armenian kingdom has completely fallen, and the first settlement of media, uh,. I believe actually it's just media in this campaign, or media Atrapatain, has fallen to us. I do think we're gonna occupy it. I do think we're gonna do that. We don't wanna upset the population too much. And would you look at that? We have made landfall in their kingdom. Um, we're gonna have to handle all that afterwards as nothing will save beyond this point. But everybody, that is where I'm going to call today's episode as I must go pick up my lovely fiancé. Without further ado, though, if you enjoyed today's episode of Today's Battles, like and subscribe as always. And I've been your host, Salty, and my co-host, Winston. And we will catch you in the next one.